Hey everybody, good morning. This is Dr. Levi. So happy to have you on our show today, the Dr. Levi Show. Guess what? This is our first show in a year because of the COVID pandemic. So I'm really glad to be back and to open the show, what I'm going to call the reiteration of Black History Month. You know, February, we could not do the show, but now that we're back and we're running, we'll be doing the show every week or every other week. I'm just glad that we're, we're, we're back in the saddle now, literally, uh, to do what we need to do. And back in the saddle is a, a perfect entree for today because we have uh, Compton Cowboys with us today. I can't wait to share share their story with you and to have these great men talk about what they do, why they do it. And also to have a real phenomenal artist, songwriter, whom I just, he, he's like, a, he's like a, a young son to me is Jamal Anthony, just a phenomenal artist. And I, I'm just so glad to be back back on board with you. There's so much I want to share with you because I, our show is about lifting everyone up. It's about service, reminding you to do what you can to be a better person. How do we do that? We do that with the title of this show today. The show today is entitled Artists, Activists, and Activism. And that's going to be the, the, the theme of the show for the next month. So we're going to really highlight people in the community who are just that. They're artists that are, are doing their thing, that they're making a difference, that they're going to these, these writing rooms and they're present, and that they're helping other artists, and that they're bringing their, their creativity and their artistry to the mainstream. And the Compton Cowboys, you know, I can't wait to have Chef Key and Randy Savvy talk to you about what they're doing in the community to make a difference and how important it is to be present present. And remember, we teach people and show people not by what we say, but our actions. Our actions and our deeds tell people about our personalities and about who we really are. So I want to remind you to be your authentic self, to live a life of service, to live a life of gratitude, and to live in a place of knowing that God is for you. And if you put him first, everything is possible. And if you have no faith during this time of COVID, I hope you find it. Because this year has been extraordinarily difficult for so many people, not only financially, but also physically and psychologically and spiritually. So I'm asking everyone for this month to reach out to people that have offended you. It could be a, a family member, a neighbor that you don't talk to, that you don't want to speak to. You know, I ask you to go deep within your heart and forgive them. I ask you to be the better person. I ask you to level up on forgiveness. I ask you to level up on gratitude. I ask you to level up on service. So do what you can to make a difference. And remember, it's not what we say. That's very little. It's what we do that tells people about who we are. So I ask you to be the, the best possible version of yourself. I ask you to give more. Because remember, you only get what you're willing to give away. So give away more love, give away more money, give away more time, give to others who need us. When you see a veteran who's on the street, talk to them, hear their story. You know, be active for people in your community. Don't just be in the community, be an integral part of the community. And again, service is the key to a great life. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about our guests and then I'm going to let them talk for themselves because they have so much to talk about. And I want to say this. I'm so grateful to have them on the show. Our show is, um, I always say that I was born to be of service and that my life is 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 filled with just gratitude. I, I, I can't thank God enough for, for giving me a platform that I can share with you. So I want to talk to these three great men who are making a difference, not by just their talk, but by their actions. So I want to welcome to the show today, Jamal Anthony, Chef Key, and of course, the great Randy Savvy. I want you to, to, to really um, enjoy their stories, enjoy what they have to say. So I'm going to start off with Jamal. So Jamal Anthony is here. He's in the house. Yeah. Jamal, so happy to have you with us today. It's great to be Let, back. Let's talk about your, 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 your life. Let's talk about your, your childhood and what brought you here following your dream as an artist to Los Angeles. Yeah, I um, the crazy thing about coming out here is I've only been out here for two and a half years now. Um, got really blessed a few years back. Um, I got into a room with Dreamers, Hollywood record band. Yes. And we wrote a song and a year later, it was on their EP, came out as a single. Yes. And that was the moment I knew it was time to leave Pennsylvania and head for greener pastures. Absolutely. California. Within my first week here, I got into a room with Grayson Chance. Yes. And landed a single on his album and kept the momentum going. Of COVID, course. Uh, 
sat a lot of people down yes. for a long time, but um, didn't do it for you though. Not you me. Moving. And if anything, it, it actually worked out really great for me because it gave me a chance to to really sit with myself and just kind of figure out exactly what I wanted to do and what I needed to do to be more self sufficient at that yes. point. Because yes. as artists, a lot of times. We need the producers, we need our engineers, we need so so many so much goes into the artistry and I think a lot of people just overlook that at times. Absolutely. I think that they just get the the finished product. Right. They but forget lot, there's a team that has to be put together a, it, to make yeah, things work effectively and exactly. efficiently. And I had to sit and learn how to work Pro Tools by myself. I had to learn how to really cut demos by myself, right. get them out by myself and I came out of it stronger. Absolutely. But you know, uh just like the Compton Cowboys, yes. we, we, you put us in the jungle, we Absolutely. come out 10 pounds faster. Like, that's just how that go. You know, when, when you have that hustle about you, you it's, make it. it's going to work out. You're going to make sure it's work out. You don't hope it's going to work out. You just do we, it. We don't, we, don't, we don't know that word hope too much. Right, we, right, right. We, we, we know it's going to work out. Absolutely. So, you know, and starting off uh, 2021, we just landed 7th Street of Chris Brown, ASAP Ferg. It's fantastic. Big single. Yes, it is. Monster single that's out right, right. now, co-written by yours truly. Absolutely. Um, currently in with Jordan Sparks right now. Great. Blanco Brown right now. Great. A couple other artists in the mix that I can't mention just yet, but yeah. um, it's moving. When, when you look at your life, what do you think brings you the greatest sense of knowing this, that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing right now? Well, it was um, eight years ago, flying out here, Actually, um, just to give a little backstory, I did a cover on YouTube eight, nine years ago. The yeah. band Runner Runner. Yes. They contacted me on Twitter. This is back in the time when Twitter was it was big. Was the thing? Right, right, right. It wasn't no Instagram. No, or TikTok. So it was Twitter right, was the right. th none of that. Yeah, right. yeah. They found me on Twitter. They said, "Hey, man, this is one of the best covers that we've heard to our song. You should come to LA." Right. I'm like, "Yeah, when?" Right. Gave me a date. The day before, I didn't even have enough money to get the ticket. Right. I was forty dollars short. Right. Buddy of mine went to the casino with me. He had about twenty five bucks. Yeah, blackjack won forty bucks. Gave it to him and said, "Go to L.A." What a blessing! Went home, brought the ticket, four hundred nineteen dollars. I'll right. never forget. All I had was the ticket. Right. Got picked up by the band from the airport. Go to the studio. We work one day. First time meeting in right. person. I just so happened to have a friend who was staying out near uh, Disney. Yes. They said, uh, where are you standing at? I was like, oh, I got a friend out here. The guy says, how you getting there? I'm like, public transportation. He's like, dude, that's going to be three hours. Ridiculous more. amount of money. Right. He right. said, but luckily, I live about 15 minutes from there, so it's not too far out the way. I'll take you. Mm -hmm. I get there. The next day, they're, this is their last day in California. They're flying back to PA. They said, we'll take you back to the studio. We just want to meet the band. Right. Call the band up. Like, hey, my friends just want to meet you there. Cool. Get back to the studio. Now I don't have no money. Right. Done. I'm looking on the way to the studio. I'm like, I see a little spot in the street. Mm -hmm. See some homeless people. I'm, I'm sleeping out there tonight. Right. Because I'm not going to be denied what's mine right, right. now. Right. I, I didn't come out here to no. whatever. To I, I, I'll wash up in the morning in, mm -hmm. their, in, their, in their bathroom. They'll right. never even know. Right. Do the session. I'm, I'm mentally prepared to right. go. I'm going to sleep on the street for the week. Right. That's okay. Right. At the end of the session, guy says, hey, man, I don't even know where you stand staying tonight, but cancel that. Cancel your hotel because you can just crash on this couch. Like, we love you, bro. Like you, we, we. Right. So for you, that was this epiphany. That, that, that was the moment where I'm like, no, God saw okay. me through this. Like, cause I, I was prepared. Yes. I was ready. Right. I'm on the street with it tonight. Right. And, and they didn't even know the situation. I, to this day, they might not even know that right. I didn't have any money. They took care of me for the whole week. Next week, I got a paycheck. They didn't want nothing back. And it was, and that was, that's the moment when it was like, if there's ever a time I felt God and knew and I was doing it. what I was supposed to be doing. Right. That was it. That was the time. It, it is, isn't it interesting, though, that in our darkest times, there comes forth the greatest light. Absolutely. You know, it, Absolutely. It, I, I think it's, it's amazing. You know, when I was mm -hmm. the, uh, I'll share this with the audience. When I, when I was at Howard University doing my master's in, in solid state physics, I had a job interview. But at the time, which not even my family knew, I was homeless for six months. So I was living in a car. So I was studying by candlelight and sometime by Bic lighter in my car. Um, because I, I had to do that. And I would, I would take a shower at the gym and I'd go back and I'd stay in this car, which is right across from a, a real big crack house in, in DC. However, the, the people who were the crack smokers, they were my friends. I would speak to them and they, they would protect me and they knew I was studying. They would always say, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna be okay, doc. You just keep studying, keep studying. And I would get in the car and being homeless was never for me a, 
a I never had any shame associated with it. Right. And it was cold in DC. You know, this was October, November, December, January, February, March. I'll never forget I, I spent my birthday, it was March nineteenth. I spent my birthday in the car uh studying. And I forgot it was my birthday. And all of a sudden one of the guys who was a uh, a crack deer lax in the neighborhood, he, he came up in the car, he said, You know who we're talking about a month ago? Day your birthday, right, brother? I said, Yeah, and he said, I got something for you. He brought me some Kentucky, excuse me, Popeye's fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I, you know, I was in the car thinking, "Wow, what a great birthday!" Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> so you know, I've never forgotten that. So, so I do think, uh, out of our darkest times, God blesses us the most. But we have to know that no matter, even if our bank account is at zero, our faith has to be at a hundred percent because God is always in the midst. He's always there. You just have to know that everything's going to be okay, and even out of homelessness, out of thinking that you might be homeless for a night, yeah. God will say, I don't think so. I got something for you. Just just let me take care. And I think living a life of faith brings us to that place of knowing this, that even in the darkest, everything will be okay. I want to thank you for sharing that, Jamal. That's Absolutely, man. Sometimes you got to go to that edge. Oh, yeah, yeah. It just felt like that. It felt like I was mm -hmm. just on the edge looking. And then once you accept, it's okay. Then it was just like, all right. Now you know. Now you going Yeah. Now you know. Just, just, just show me that you trust me. <laughs> exactly. And that, that was the biggest. That was the biggest leap of faith. Like we were, me and uh, me and the fellows were actually talking yes. about that out there. It's just, it's that faith. Man. You gotta have faith. Gotta have and I, I have what I, I call uh, surrender faith, where you gotta know that mm. no matter what. Wow. You gotta surrender. Surrender. You got. You gotta. You gotta. You gotta surrender all of yourself. Okay. Not just, not just the good. You have to surrender it all, and know that that there's a plan for our lives, things will get better, and that, it, as, it, as it says, the footsteps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. So I think when we stay in faith, when we stay with that knowingness that everything's going to be okay, he'll connect all the right people in our lives at just the right times, and nobody can stop it. They might try, but they can't do it. You know, I always think about something my grandmother would say, which I used to love as a kid, and that was, you know, I'd come home some time and, and she'd say, oh, you fighting at school again? And I'd be like all busted up and everything. And uh, i say, yeah. She said, well, don't worry about them. You know, she used to call me like little nigga boy, little black sambo. Because at the time, I was like really, really thin and uh, just just a wimp of a kid at the time. But always brave. Always like wasn't taking it. And uh, she would always say, well, don't worry, Levi. She said, you remember, boy, even when I'm gone. And she is gone now. She said, you just remember that. You just think of this. This is the hand of God, and this is God holding you. So for them to shake you up, they got to shake the hand of God that's holding you, and they can't do that. Wow. And so that would always take me to this place of knowing that no matter how tough things seem to be, I know who's holding me, and I know who cares for me, and I know whose I am and where I am, and that God's going to take care of it, you know. So um, that's a powerful story, Jamal, so thanks for sharing that with us. Now, Randy Savvy and Chef Key. Compton Cowboys in the house! You see it? You see the hat? Yeah. You see it brimmed up? Real yeah. life. You see what's going on, Exactly. Man. This ain't no gimmick. This ain't no gimmick. Real life. Exactly. Well, I got to tell you, Randy, I'm happy to have you and Chef Key here. Let's hear about the Compton Cowboys. You know, I know that the posse started in 1988. I want to hear about both of you, your involvement in it, what you feel your impact is in the community, and your vision of the Compton Cowboys and what they do for the community. Well, thank you so much for having me, Absolutely. having us, Dr. Levi. And I'm so ha so um, happy to hear Jamal's story and meet yeah, him. And I mean, this is really Real powerful right. testimony yeah. and oh, yeah. really powerful. rocking my spirit this morning. Great, um, man. You know, the Compton Cowboys is, I, I feel like it's just been an incredible journey, a really a spiritual journey. And I love the whole talk about, you know, walking by faith, basically walk by faith, not by sight, because we basically, we didn't know what we was doing. We just felt the, the calling to band together and do and, and keep something going and, and do something good for our community. Uh, you know, I'm, my family moved to the Riston Farms way back in the 80s. Uh, my aunt was just a horse girl, cowgirl who wanted to have a horse and live a, a life in the city, a, a cowgirl life. And just by nature of circumstances, she found herself deeply entrenched in the troubled community and she wanted to make a difference. And she had horses and she loved horses and her kids and other kids around the neighborhood loved horses. So she said, 
that's the that's the move right there. That's the lick. If I could use these horses to get these kids excited, yes. when they when once they're excited, now I can put I can drop gems on them. You know right. what I'm saying? And and and, and help them become uh, the, the right kind of people that Absolutely. this world this world needs. So uh, I was born into that. He came around, uh, you know, maybe what by when you was like what eight, nine, ten, uh, and the rest <clears> of the Compton Cowboys are 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 people who. In some way, shape, or form, kind of came into the fold into yes. the program, and we grew up full blown ride, like living the cowboy life. Absolutely. Even though we was in Compton, you know, we was in the Richland Farms. My aunt was just this horse lady with these rent with these horses. My dad was like, my, who was her brother, was like the the brains of the, like the the, the hands on technical guy. Yes, and she was like the one in the field making it all work, and they. Partnered they just, up and they accepted us. They yeah, just, they, they just they, did. They, they like no, they they literally took me as a young as a young child and like took me in with with an animal that they wanted me to take care of and they treated me as like their own. Yeah, their you son. Know, every 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 kid that came through that program, they treated us like a son. I you know, and ever since then we you know we all the members that came all came before me. I was the last member. Really, you know, one of the last members. So. They already had their friendship. I'm like the new kid on the block, and I'm like, oh, well, I like horses. I like horses too. Like, let's you know, let's be yeah, friends. Right. And we became that, family, man. And, and and so our whole group right now is a family operation. We down in the Richland Farms on private family property right. with horses. We got our nonprofit organization. We these horses, you know, like our mantra is "Streets raised us, horses saved us." Yes, I love that. That's man. our. That's a real life. That's just not a clever tagline, even though it is a clever tagline. Yes, it is. Tag yes, it is. And, you know, uh, but for real, it, it works because it's authentic. Yes, it is. Like we was raised in the streets of Compton, but we're, we're like we could have easily been the victims of gang violence. Absolutely. Anything that you we can should. name. We could have easily been Absolutely. there. We could have been in jail. We could have been in the grave. We could be right now strung out on drugs. We Absolutely. could have been de victims of domestic violence. Anything right. you name, we could have been that. But like you say, that wasn't God's plan for Absolutely. us. Bro. Like like we, the horses, that ranch, that was like our sanctuary. Yes. Like that kept us, the uh, the difference between life and death, where we come from, is being in the front yard versus the backyard. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like right. the front yard is the street side where right. anything can happen on them streets. Absolutely. And we, uh, we've been there when stuff didn't happen. That's yes. part of our, that's part of what we face in our trauma and things that we're going through now is healing from all of that. But right. we're doing that through these horses. But we grew up in the backyard. Yes. Where we were safe and we had animals and we learned the value of life and we learned the, uh, the value of nature and environment. So uh, we grew up, we grew up the right way. And so now what we're doing is just paying it forward to the next generation providing newer opportunities, you know, making it, making the cowboy thing a popular cultural yes. icon, you yes. know what I'm saying? Making it cool and dope to be a cowboy, right. whereas, you know, America basically whitewashed the whole cowboy vibe and turned it into, like, the John Wayne and right. Marlboro, you know, right. Marlboro right. Man course, and all that. So here we come, we like, man, we young dudes in the culture looking around like, Bro, we grew up cowboys. How come it ain't no dope fly cowboys on right, TV? Right. How come it ain't no dope fly cowboys right. in music? Right. You know what I'm saying? Why everybody with a cowboy hat on from Nashville? Right. Where, you know what I'm saying? So that's what we're doing now. We're just reclaiming culture, right. history, tradition, and showing these kids that, yo, no matter where you come from, what you're doing, you could do it too. You could be fly. You could be dope. But it's also dope to be in your community. Absolutely. It's dope to give. And what I love is that. that That's what I love about the impact of your, your program. It's about giving back to community. Yeah. And the other thing I think is very powerful that I... You know, reading about the Compton Cowboys, what, what something that I think you do very, very easily and very wonderfully is that you are helping to heal societal traumas. Don't forget, so often that we are a disenfranchised community, so often we are thought about as being less than, so often we are thought about as having not a place at the table. I'm grateful that the Compton Cowboys are about letting everyone know that, number one, you're worthy. Number two, even if you're from Compton or Inglewood, no matter what, you have worth, you have value, and that the Compton Cowboys will will accept you, will love you, will help you to be the best version of yourselves. And I think it's really, really important, especially now. I Absolutely, it's man. It's all about togetherness. And, and, you know, a lot of times people ask us, what's the Compton Cowboys mission? And that's a big question, yes, right? Yes, it is. Uh, and, you know, there's a, there's a, hint, there's a specific mission which is like about which is like qualitative right i mean quantitative right and those kind of things about like you know we want to we want to change lives we want to put ranches all over the world and we want to heal but for me our big big mission is you know healing the earth absolutely you know what i mean like yeah. that's the big wow. thing like healing the earth bro because the earth is suffering from yes, is. You know, so many different things and whether you're talking about racism where you talk about environmental impact where you're talking about disenfranchisement and all these different things you could you could run the gamut of that list but for us just showing us black 
human on these horses out in nature feeling the wind showing the kids doing the right music doing the right things in society like even without people even without having to preach to people about just change right just by our nature of existing yes it's going to change things for the better so that's what we that's what gets us up every day and even a lot of times we don't know what's coming we don't like this whole mission for us is man we just long as we together and we got this ranch and we just believe and that's just been our story. I tell, I can't tell you how many times I laid down like, man, I don't know how I'm gonna pay that bill. I don't know what to tell the homies, but I don't even, I don't tell them nothing because right. I know God gonna tell me. Exactly. And and I think then, that's then when we, we work it through. Right. See, I think that's that's a very powerful statement you made. I think it's so important that we get the message of what we should what we should do when we listen and in the silence. Yeah, Not when just people talk, and yeah. I think there, that's that's mm-hmm. it, Randy. I think in the stillness, we can hear the thunderous voice of God, but not in the noise, not with the TV, when things are still, and we can just sit there and go to that place of, okay, I don't know how it's going to work out, but you know I need help. How are you going to do this through me? I can't do it, but you said you can do everything. Okay, I'm calling you on it. I want to see you do it through right. me. How are we going to work this out? Precisely. Yeah. You know, That's so I, exactly I think it. what you're doing is, is phenomenal. And I love the fact that you were saying earlier, Chef Key, is that this is really having an impact on agriculture also in the community and on the earth. Absolutely. Can you talk about that a little bit? Um, Yeah, so just to, you know, kind of back up, you know, what he was saying about how it just kind of brought all of us together for, like, this main mission, this main goal. You know, every every car has its own parts. Yes, it does. You know, and our, our car, you know, revolves around the horses, it, yes. it revolves around our, our community, the kids. And at the end of that that car part, it's um, the agriculture. Absolutely. You know, bringing awareness to people that are less fortunate. Hey, if you can't afford that, you can grow that. Right. You can grow your own food. Right. You know, you can, you can, you can literally harvest your own tomatoes. Right. And don't go to the grocery store. Right. And we, we, you know, my, my part of the, of the, the, the car is, is that, you know, bringing awareness to, the community starting community gardens yes um it's very powerful you know very powerful very powerful stuff that my calling it didn't come just overnight you know I, it took me 10 years to, to figure out what i wanted to do absolutely you know i went to culinary school uh fresh out of high school almost didn't make it through high school but almost dropped out right you know by right. by the by the grace of god yeah. I, I kept going exactly you know i went to culinary school and reached the maximum potential i, I was the youngest executive chef in hollywood right but that didn't, it didn't do enough for me right. until the Compton Cowboys came about and, you know, our mission was like, okay, let's band together and let's, you know, let's kind of just, you know, pass the torch on to the youth. Absolutely. And I was like, how, how can I do that? And I was like, well, I like food. Right. Let's just teach them how to grow their own food. Right. Let's teach them how to, you know, self-stability. Right. And self-sustaining. And, yes, self-sustaining. And, you know, you don't have to depend on anybody else to, to, to get what you want. Absolutely. If you want a tomato... You could grow twenty tomatoes. Absolutely. You know, so that's and that's really yourself and not have anything to pay for. Right. You you do it yourself. Right. And again, that you just know? goes back to healing the earth, and it's all Absolutely. about wellness. Yes, using, it is. Using the earth to heal the earth. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. That's big. Using the earth to heal the earth. Yeah. Wellness, bro, and it's, it's mind, body, soul, spirit. It's all it's all connected. I love Absolutely. The, I love the concept of ecosystem. Absolutely. And the ecosystem, there's so many moving parts, like he said. And it's a, but it, all those parts have to work in, in unison. Yeah, absolutely, so, like, they have to work synergy. together because yeah. they work synergistically. Then you get the best outcome, right. and that's the most efficient. Yeah. Yes. You know, if they're working, if everybody's doing their part, uh, if one person is not or if one part is not working well, the whole system falls. Right. You know, nothing is working well together. Right. You know, what do you think is the glue that holds the Compton Cowboys together? Besides the great friendship you all have, what do you what do you think is that? Is that one thing? Would you say it's faith? Would you yes. say it's community involvement? Would you say it's a, a feeling of being of service? Uh, is it a feeling of continuing on the legacy? What What would you say is the glue that holds you all together as a foundation, and more importantly, as a family? The struggle. Yeah. Mm. I was man. You took the words right out of my mouth. The struggle. It's the struggle, man. It's the struggle. Going through the struggle together. Yes. Being in the trenches together. Yeah. Hurting. Yeah. Yeah. But looking at each other like, we're going to make it. Yeah, absolutely. How absolutely. can I get up and yeah. what can I do today Right. to keep going? And, and our collective sense of struggling together and, and belief that we're going to make it out and do something better yeah. on a 
worldwide capacity. Absolutely. That keep us together. Yeah. yeah. Everything else we know that we can accomplish because we we see in the darkest day. Absolutely. We in it together. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like if we was doing it on our own, you know, we all got our own mental health things we're going through as a community already, black folks. You know of what course. I'm saying? We already still PTSD from slavery forward that we still ain't resolved and everything else that happened after that. Of course. But what helps it helps you get through is that togetherness. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at your fellow brethren and your sisters and being like, You hurting, I'm hurting. Right. We well, we all tripping. Right. But if we gon' we gonna all be tripping, we might as well trip together. Absolutely. And it's then be together. like and have somebody to bounce off, like, oh bro, you tripping. Oh right. no, I'm tripping. All right, you tripping. All right. And this as long as we tripping together, we can hold each other accountable, help push each other forward. Yes. We sit around, we yes. cry together. Of course. Yeah, for you feel me? We, we laugh lights. together. Of course. We eat together. Of course. We work together. We yeah. succeed we on together. Mission. We, on, we all yeah. on the same boat, on the same ship, trying to of get course. to the promised land. Of and we're trying to invite as many people as we can along the way. Absolutely. Uh, come to with get us. There. Come Absolutely. with us. Everybody, come with us, man. We we want to see all of our people, you know, overcome the struggle. You know, if you see somebody out there right now that's struggling and you might not have the same struggle, you can go, hey, man, you good, man, pick them up. Because you don't know at the end of the day that might help them, you know, Live their life, ten more days. You don't know. You don't know what the what their problem is that day. But if your struggle is lighter than lighter than theirs that day, you you can just hey man, like you said, you uh you know you see a homeless person on the street, a, a veteran on the street, say something to him. Absolutely, encourage your word, them. encourage them, encourage yeah. them. Hey man, I know you're going through something, but it's gonna be okay. Absolutely, you're gonna be all right. And that's Absolutely. you know that's that's a part of the struggle. People Absolutely. that that live in the struggle together. That understand the struggle. It's yes. like you know what I know you're struggling. I'm struggling too, but we are gonna struggle together. And if if I can help you with your struggle right now, if he got ten dollars in his pocket, I ain't got a dollar. If I'm struggling that bad, he gonna give me five dollars. Absolutely. Thank you, bro, man. That man, I made my day. He bought me a burger with and that I'm five dollars. There's nothing more rewarding Absolutely. than when you at your lowest. Give. Oh man. yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. For That's real. how you get it back. When you at more, your lowest, more, more. when you don't got Absolutely. nothing, Absolutely. find something to give. Absolutely. Cause that's what that's that's planting seeds and that's investment that's spiritual investment. Absolutely, Literally planting seeds in the dirt to Absolutely. give to to the people that Absolutely. can't have it, right? Mm -hmm. Or don't have it. Don't they don't have don't it? Have it. Mm -hmm. They don't have the means to go mm -hmm. to go pay pay for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. They don't have it. They so no, we it. just gonna grow this. We gonna we gonna plant the seeds, right? And we gonna teach the next people how to plant the seeds so we can break that generational curse. Absolutely, you know? this, and I think that is, is so important. You heard that wow. to break the generational curse, so that things are different. You gonna say Jamal? This is the leaders that we need. Oh, this tattoo much. right here, believe. So. Absolutely. It's my favorite word ever, believe. Absolutely. Absolutely. They believe in something. Oh, yes, they do. And we they believe in the cause. Yes, we do. Yeah. And they're showing that. Absolutely. I listened to this man with tears in his eyes. Right. made me get tears in my eyes I because I felt what Absolutely. he was talking about. Absolutely. So that, that type of brotherhood, yeah. that's what we need. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Man, that's a lot. We that. That's it means what a lot. We need. Appreciate that. To to see this over here, like I'm getting right. I'm getting chills listening right. to them talk. Right. Cause it's powerful. I'm getting chills listening authentic. to my brothers talk. Right. right. We don't it's have real. enough of that. No, we don't. We we're we're, st we're still breaking curses. Absolutely. We're still the the planting. Yeah. This this is what school we don't learn this in school. Right. They don't teach you this. They in don't school. teach us. They this don't in teach school. you this. This is the real school. stuff. Like, see, this could go right. a whole different way. This is the type of stuff that we truly need Absolutely. to be self sufficient. Absolutely. Yeah. We were just talking about. Even with the music, the independence, right. just all of that. Right. But like stuff like this is what we really need. We, we don't learn this in school. No, no, no. We spend 18 years of our lives going to a place, learning a bunch of stuff that really don't apply. I didn't learn financial literacy right. until I was, until it was right. almost yeah. too yeah. late. Health, yeah. wellness, you don't learn mental health, all of that. All of that. And I'm, and I'm someone who has had bouts of depression right. of course same and same, here. same here <laughs> and Look. not to whatever but in the especially in the black community it's like a it's something that is overlooked mm -hmm. so much it's looked upon and so stigmatized. often and stigmatized that's the key i see it in medicine it's a so often it's looked upon if you have a mental so if i'm missing a hand or fingers or i don't have an arm we can see that we can yeah. see that trauma but you don't often see the trauma of mental health issues, from depression to anxiety, but to post-traumatic stress disorder, to um, just just fear. Some people just have fear, fear about meeting people, yeah. anxiety about just leaving the house, agoraphobia, fear about 
just living their lives. Right. And what I, what I love is that you guys are not only planting seeds of how to live off the earth and make the earth better, but how to make yourself better. Right. Yeah. Because if you can be more independent, you're a better person for that. So you guys are teaching people how to be spiritually independent, how to be independent with respect to planning, fiscally independent. All these things make yeah. a difference in how we live, how we heal, and how we, more importantly, go on to the next level. It's all about generational improvement. And that's what the, the three of you mm -hmm. are about. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I mean, healing is, I mean, that's the word of the day. That's the word of life. That's everything. It's like, in the, you, you know, no matter what you're trying to do, you only going to heal if you have faith. If you recognize what your issues are and you just have fortitude about, okay, I'm going to get better. And I'm going to get my brothers better, my brothers better, get my family better. And my father is really big on, you know, he calls it his concentric circles or something, some kind of term he uses where it's like you start with self and you start with whoever next to you. And then you, then his family, then his extended family, then his community, then his city, then his state, nation, world. Of course. And of course. that's been his model. My dad is a Harvard MBA, mm -hmm. 1984. He could have been doing anything in this world right now. Right. He could be doing anything. Right. When he graduated, guess what he did? He moved to the hood. Right, right. And uh, his homies gave him flack for that. Because, you know, they all Harvard dudes now. They all like, bro, we about to, I'm about to go doctor up, lawyer up. I'm finna go live in Brentwood, West right, Side. Right, woo -woo. Right. He like, bro, y'all got it all backwards, bro. Right. He like, I'm moving to Compton. Right. His homie's like, bro, you moving to Compton? Well, you can live anywhere. Why are you gonna move to the ghetto? He's like, I'm gonna show you. Right. They gave him flat. Now, 30 years later, they calling him. Of course. I just seen your son on CNN. Of course. There you go. Yeah, I just yeah. seen. I just seen. He got gang members voting. There you go. You know, what I mean, he got kids that. Rough around the edges, they want they they pursuing professional careers. Now. Absolutely, you know Absolutely. what I'm saying. And, and and so he is vindicated, right? And he looking at me with that pride in his eye, like I told him, right, right. And I did it. And right. so he resting. He's his spirit. He so his heart and his spirit. He's like the happiest guy. He ain't we ain't got much, right. but he like man, I man, I'm, I'm life, bro. Right. Like I'm looking at my kids and they homies out here changing the community. Right. My homies that I grew up with and all that, they calling me like, bro, man, your kids and y'all, they doing it. I mean, my kids, they I grew them up with the best of everything, and now they off, got their own families, living their own careers. I don't even see my kids, bro. Right. He's like, man, you know I see my kids every day. There you go. Wow. Tell me that's not a blessed life. And, blessed and life. your dad, what, what a phenomenal man he is to already know he's vindicated by how he's lived his life and he did it you know one of my favorite words he did it unapologetically mm -hmm. he said okay this is the right thing to do okay you can say that you can say that that's fine but let me do me and your dad did this that he did himself and his doing that look at that concentric circle that he's opened up for family community for the country for the world mm -hmm. he's done it well Yes, I mean, sir. your dad is really a, uh, what I call a true social trailblazer. You know, he, he's really done that uh, in a phenomenal way. And don't forget, you are his seed. So you will continue to plant that legacy of greatness that your father has. Absolutely. What a phenomenal man he is. What a phenomenal man that you are. Same with you, Chef Key, to sure. continue this legacy. Isn't that yeah. just great? It's, it's about beautiful. calling. Yes. You know, like he was called. And but he, he did accepted it that. But he, that's it. He accepted it. And it, many a call. You got to just accept. You mm. and, and it was crazy. And I and this is my personal experience as well because I seen the vision so vividly. It just I, I just I just saw it so vividly. It was like God was telling me this the this the goal right here. He showed me the whole picture. He said, "What you gonna do? You gonna, now you gonna go paint it?" And I'm like. I could have been like, I don't know how to pay that. I don't got the right tools. I don't got the. I just dropped everything. I left my job. Yeah, I moved everything. back to the neighborhood. I yeah. crammed all my stuff in my dad's basement. I'm getting up grinding every day. And when I tell you, every day has been a journey, but I have not went without since then. Never Man. will. I have not went mm -hmm. without. Every bill gets paid. Right. right. I'm paying my homies. Right. I'm taking care of dozens of horses right. in the hood. Right. Yeah. 
and you go to our ranch, we got one of the nicest ranches in this nation. Right. I'm not talking about just black or urban. I'm talking about eat like ranches. Period. Like, it's right. neat. It's nice. Right. Our horse is beautiful. Right. We got kids facility. there. Right. I went out there the other day, and it's just the kids running around in the dirt, and the horses out there, and I'm just looking, and I'm like, God is good. Yes, he is. Yes, we, he is. we ain't got much, but we got everything. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You know, we're unlocking yeah. a universe. Oh, absolutely. We're all universes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. And I'm looking this. When you find out who you are. Yes. Pretty amazing. Don't let that go over your head. Yeah, yeah for so sure. Find cool. out for who sure. you are. That's it's when a good it thing. open up. And it's, oh, yeah, you can't, it's no obstacle that can no, get in your way. There's no way you can't accept that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You, when you have to accept something, yes. that, that is just, it's just put in your face so many times. It's like, all right, man, I guess I, guess I, I accept who I am now. Right. I accept what I, because you know, a lot of people get distracted. They, they get distracted by social media and right. all this other stuff. And they, oh, I want to be that. Oh, I want to be like that. And then it's like, that's not you. That's no. not for you. Mm-hmm. Accept who you are. Right. Accept what you do. Right. And accept what you're going to do to change the community. Absolutely. But you got to know who you are. You yeah. know, one of my favorite shirts that I have, it says, uh, it says, you, give me one second. It, it says, uh, there is only, it'll come to me. It, it's a, it, it'll come to me. Oh, it says, uh, be yourself. There's only one of you. Right. And I've always loved that because mm-hmm. I think it's, it's true. It's facts. You know, it's facts. It's facts. Exactly. Yeah, it's you know, be yourself. There's only one of you. Oh, it said, no, it says, uh, uh, be yourself. Everyone else is taken. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I, I always thought yeah. that everybody else is already, everybody's taken. already yeah. taken, you know, how, how, how wonderful it is to know that. There's only one of you right. in the entire universe. And as you said so wisely, that each of us, we're all the universe. Yeah. And as your dad says so beautifully, think of each universe as a concentric circle. When you bring those circles together, everybody brings their light to it. You got bigger light. Yeah. yeah. But you got to come to the table in service. Mm-hmm. You got to surrender. You got you to gotta, you gotta show up. Yeah. Greatness is on the other side of fear. Always. Yeah. Always. Once, sure, you, so. once you let go of that fear. Absolutely. Cause you know what? Um, right. a lot of times, and it's and it's, I notice a lot of times that it'll be in your hometown. It'll be like whatever. People, a lot of people suffer from the crab in a bucket. Syndrome. Oh yeah, they don't want to let you oh, out yeah. that bucket. But you gotta crawl. But you, you get once you, if you <laughs> let that fear go, absolutely, and don't never let somebody tell you you can't do something. Oh, unapologetic, they can't do man. It. Unapologetic, you go, tell because me, no. they can't do it. Because people will put their fears on you. Yes, they'll put their limitations on you. Yes, they'll put all yes. that on you. Absolutely, I had. It but it's theirs. Today. Yeah, that, if I would have listened to people telling me what I could and couldn't do, you still be in PA. I still be in PA, yeah, um, right, right. working in a warehouse right, or whatever. Right. But you on the other no. side yeah. of that fear, right. I'm, I'm unlocking my greatness. If you tell, you are doing if it. you tell me no, if you tell me no, I'm gonna look at you and I'm gonna be, hey, okay, I'm gonna go back home. I'm gonna yeah. figure out how to do it. <laughs> exactly. And, right. and when I do it, right. I'm gonna come back to you and I'm gonna be like, hey, remember you told me I couldn't do this or oh, you didn't think I was capable? Look, I did it and right. I'm gonna go right around you Absolutely. and I'm gonna keep going. Absolutely. I'm gonna keep doing it because you, you can't tell me no. You said no, you I cannot. did it and I did it I did twice. It and I did right, right, right. So, <laughs> exactly. So if you I tell me I can't do something, right. I'm gonna right. turn right back around right. and be like, hey, you know what? I did it. And I'm gonna, throw, right. I'm gonna come right back to you. I did it. Right. When you said that, it made me think of something my father used to say. As a kid, I used to always think, that's so damn stupid. But now, I get it. Yeah. He'd always say if I if I if I come and I told him, you know, I was struggling with this dad, somebody said no to this. And he said, Levi, just just tell him the word. And I look at him and say, I know. His word was always next. Right. <laughs> Hello. Tell him something. There's a kid who'll be like, I yeah. don't want to hear next. I want to yeah. hear something else. Yeah. You know? I, I love hear that, that crap. Man. Man. I love it. You know? Yeah, so, you just got to have fortitude. Yes, you do. And uh, yes, you, do. you get sure. all everything you need, God already got for you. Yes, he does. And it you can't just, be blocked. Yeah, and you just got to accept it. He'll be right, right there with it for you. Yeah. And I actually found myself just by listening and accepting my calling. I didn't, you know, I was pursuing a particular path. And, you know, because we, you know, how they always say, uh, you want to make God laugh, tell him what your plan is. <laughs> right, exactly. So, you know, I, I'll be ha- I was having my particular path and it was going great in my eyes until I realized, like, this ain't even what it, it's all about. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then right, right, right. once I accepted my calling, like I saw the vision, accepted it, jumped out blind faith, just trusting. 
And when I tell you, that brought me home. Right. It brought me literally home because I came back to the hood to my dad's house. Right. Yeah. And then brought me spiritually home just by realizing, oh, that's who I am. I'm a cowboy from the block, bro. Yes, you are. Yes, you know you what I'm are. saying? I'm, with, I'm right here born and raised in the, in the neighborhood. I got to be with my brothers, my homies. Right. I got to change they, change my life, change their life, grow my kids up here. I don't need to be living in the valley with, in a condo, working salary right. jobs right. and, and driving around with shades on. Like, right. that ain't it. But well, I was doing that. Right. And I was so unfulfilled. I, I, I got to a point where I would get off work. And I would be like, man, I got everything I ever asked for, and this ain't it. So I just would lay under the park. I would park under a tree and just lay there <laughs> right. and realize, like, that's what I'm missing, the Ristling Farms, man, them trees, the right. birds. Chickens. So I just left. I left everything, my salary, my condo, my everything, moved back to the neighborhood. And ever since then, I've been Randy Savvy. Which is Cowboy great, hat, cowboy, right. community activist. Right. You know what I'm entertainer. saying? Entertainer. Entertainer. Wow. Right. All of that. And I'm and I'm so fulfilled. I got every, now I really do have every, and it ain't like this. It no. ain't like this. Tangibles. No. It's inside. Absolutely. And I got everything now. I'm fulfilled and I wake up happy every day, man. What, what a Thanks. great thing though. And what a, what a powerful statement, you know, Chef Key, Randy, Jamal, to say that I work, wake up happy. Mm -hmm. You know, how many people can say that? Yeah, That's a gift. Tough. You know, yeah. I always say our first gift is is our health, of course. And our second gift, I believe, is our lives of service. What we can give to people. Mm -hmm. How we can influence them to be better. Right. How we can make young men better great men. How can we make great men the best great men that they can be? So I think when we live unapologetically, when we live in complete surrender, then I think God just says, okay, you got that? I got this for you. Right. You know, if we think we're going to get this, he said, mm-mm, yeah. I got I got this. Right, thing. yeah. It's you bigger. Know? It's bigger. But it's Always behind the curtain. God, there yeah, you go, brother. Yeah, yeah. It is behind yeah, the curtain. Yeah. You want everybody want what's on stage. Yeah, yeah. They don't know what's going on behind. Everybody want to be on that stage. Right. Behind that curtain. That's the that's where the show happens. Right? Dude, I, yeah. I tell you, you know, I'm just so grateful we had this chance today to talk to great Randy Savvy, Chef Key, and Jamal Anthony. I mean, they're just uh great men that remind me that I can be a better man, remind me that I can give more, be of greater service, and, and just uh, live in complete unapologetic surrender. Because I think when we live in that place, I believe that's where we can hear the whisper of God to guide every aspect of our lives. So don't worry about where you are right now. Just believe that there's something better coming. Have faith. Any closing thoughts, Jamal? Maybe give us a quick like one minute of a song that you like, man. Let's yeah, do a little you know, bit of I was um, I think I gotta. There's a song I wrote called Easier. Yes, I and like that. It's just a song just about like whoever said it was gonna get easier. Right. So I'll just give you a little verse. Yeah, give us a good, a quick so minute. So give it, it to goes, you. It uh, goes. So how far is the moon from the planet? How did Armstrong move when he landed? How many was the crew on the Titanic? How long did it take for them to panic? Going to a frantic. What if Jordan never came back? Who would be the king if Kareem played Shaq? Mm -hmm. What if Tyson never lost cuss? What if Rosa Parks wasn't on bus? Mm. What if the North and the South and the East and the West was at peace and police didn't beat us to death? Mm -hmm. What if we all love? What if we all thugs? Yeah. Who child? Whoever said it was gonna get easier. Ooh, child. Ooh, child. Ooh, child. Whoever said it was gonna get easier. Ooh, child. Ooh. What if Pac never got into that scuffle? What if that coward never shot Nipsey Hustle? Can't preach. What if the Mayflower went into a mutiny? What if we never had a Martin Luther King? How did Magic Johnson get that AIDS cure? I wonder how much he paid for it. A real man can tell you that he love you. And I put that on them and the man that's above you. Uh, what if the North and the South and the East and the West was at peace and police? Oh, I, man, I love yeah, you, brother. I love you, brother. Asking Spare those important that's questions. Up. Tell me that's not asking those, man. Asking those important questions. Absolutely, yeah. man. Absolutely. Stuff us all introspective stuff. Absolutely. Uh, Thank you for your talent. It's important man. for us Absolutely. to be thinking about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, any closing thoughts, uh, Randy Savvy, Chef Key? You guys got, we got like uh, another for 30 me, seconds. man, just community. If you could find a way to get, if you want fulfillment, you want your heart to be healed and whole, give away. 
Yes. Give yourself. Yes. And to the people around you. Yes. Especially the ones that don't have it. So that's Absolutely. all my life. And that that's that that'll bring you the greatest reward. Absolutely. Now, Chef Key, any closing thoughts? Uh no, nah, I'm gonna just say bless up. Take it one day at a time, y'all. Absolutely. Now, before I let you guys go today, I'm gonna let uh Randy Savvy, Chef Key, and Jamal Anthony give you their social media platforms. How can they reach out to Compton Cowboys to both Absolutely. Of you individually? For us, Compton, at Compton Cowboys on all social media. So yeah. you go to, no matter what platform it is, at Compton Cowboys is the handle. We're doing everything there. That's how you can see what we're up to. Yeah. Fantastic. Jamal Anthony? And I'm at uh, The Molly Star. That's T-H-E-M-A-L-L-Y-S-T-A-R. And um, you can also hit the website, officialjamalanthony.com. Fantastic. Well, everybody, it's Dr. Levi. I hope you enjoyed the show. I, I feel so blessed that we have these, these great, individuals, these great men who really show us the, the, the power of humanity, the power of artists, artistry, activism, and being a cowboy, a real cowboy, yep. the Compton mm -hmm. Cowboys, you know, be, being a real artist, <laughs> like the, 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 the savvy, suave voice of Jamal Anthony. You know, what, what a, a great way to, to kick off for us this month that I'm gonna be celebrating of, of Black History Month. You know, we must honor our ancestors. We must honor the people that are here with us today. And most importantly, we must live a life of service. It's all about giving, not about what you can take, because guess what, you can't take it with you but you can give people a smile, a hug. You can give what you can to your community. Give, 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 and just, just be amazed at how God will bless you back. Be amazed, all right? God bless you all. This is Dr. Levi. Remember, be kind, be generous, be respectful to everyone. And I wanna say again, I'm thankful to Jamal Anthony. I'm thankful to Chef Key and the great Randy Savvy. What great men we have on this earth, and we're all better because of them. This is Dr. Levi. Be kind, be, be good, and be of service. Bye, everybody.